So I suppose you can consider this the follow-up to Suella Weyman's grand speech at the UN. And as, well, I predicted back then, yes, it turned out exactly like I thought it would go. It was a highly embarrassing moment for the UK. Uh, Suella Braverman, and I'll agree with with John uh, John John Case here. You know, she trashed seventy years of human rights in thirty minutes. <laughs> that, that, that is what she did, and she set out all this thing—the idea that multiculturalism has has failed, leading to, and I think quite rightly so. I think it was the Sky News report who quite rightly said, "Wait, what, what do you mean multiculturalism?" has failed because here's Suella Braverman, a second generation immigrant whose parents were ultimately economic migrants from what we can tell. They weren't fleeing persecution or discrimination. They came to the UK for a better life. Those were economic migrants, the type of migrants which Suella Braverman says we shouldn't be accepting, that we've let far too many of those people in. We've been far too nice over these past 70 years. It's time to crack down. And this was what I said yesterday as well in this video. What she has essentially asked is, look, we're trying to like be really hard and go right wing and just, we'd really love to just go, you know what, no immigration for like the next dot number of years you know if if we can guys that would be great and amazing if you know you let us do that we'll we'll crack on and do that but we need permission from you guys to be able to do that <laughs> and that's essentially really what she was asking she was asking the un to come and do her own homework to do her own job and we've explained time and time again if suella breverman wants to solve this big asylum backlog that we've got then fund the system. Employ people to work in the, in the system that Theresa May cut because she was warned at the time when she started this um, very hard right trend in towards immigration. Like I say, it was Theresa May who started this whole, um, uh, what do they call it? The... Uh, the, the the nasty but not not the nasty party but the um the idea that you know we've got to be mean to immigrants this this sort of nasty image that we've got to sort of portray I can't come up with it now it's on the tip of my tongue but I can't remember it. it's not coming out but never mind um but that's what she started she was warned at the time if you do this in in 10 years or more time there is going to be a severe problem because you have cut the the numbers you've cut the number of people we can only process this amount so fast you know if you get rid of those people well that increases the time and it was not just the asylum claims that this affected this also drastically affected the justice system and the fact that you have cases going all the way back to 2017 and 2018 that have not been heard and I, I, I keep on telling you, if you want to see how bad our justice system is, just go read the blog of The Secret Barrister and just see how bad the fact that we have crumbling courtrooms. With one instance, they give that they were there, um, you know, doing their job. And in the corner, there's just this le this gushing water coming into a bucket. And every so often, there's people coming in to put a new bucket in and take the other one away and empty it because that's how bad it was. And they couldn't move to another courtroom because they didn't have another courtroom to move to. It's basic infrastructure like that. It's the fact that they are not paying prosecutors enough. So we've seen thousands of prosecutors leave the leave the profession or new people just not go into it, which again causes a big problem. And that was all with austerity. But enough about that. But that is one big problem all bundled together. And the asylum system is part of that problem, that defunding of it, which Suella Braverman, if she wanted to, could do like that. She could absolutely do that. No problem. The other thing she could do, set up safe routes. We know safe routes work. They could do this. 
we could do, as we, as we know, the EU's even offered, France has even offered, have a system where you could start processing people on the side of the French border so you can get them into the system. But no, that was turned down, not only by Sola Braverman, but by Pretty Patel as well. And instead, they want to introduce this new system where they just send people off to Orlando because somehow that's going to make everything better. But we've seen in other countries that have tried this, that system, that endpoint where they get sent up to, doesn't, shall we say, tend to be very good. Australia, Israel being two prime examples. Like I say, just look what happened there. But there was another part to this speech. And I think it's a part that a lot of people aren't really talking about. Yes, the speech was pretty much a watered down version almost of the Rivers of Blood speech. But what was the idea behind it? What was the intention of Suella going to the UN giving this speech? This was absolute red meat to the right wing of the Tory party, trying to put out that she once again as she said at the National Conservative Conference, that I am the next natural leader of the Tory party. And if you want my credentials and how hard I'm going to be on, on, on immigration, well, look, I went to the UN and I told them this is what you have to do. And once again, we need to be careful that the proposed referendum that they want to put out of leaving the European Court of the European Convention of Human Rights and, and trashing the UN's own um, laws on this, that is what she would want to do. That is what she would run on. That's the platform she would run on. You cannot let someone like this ever gain the reins of power. If Rishi Sunak was a stronger prime minister, there should be no question that the second she returns, she should be summoned to his office and dismissed back to the backbenchers where she belongs, because she does not belong on the front benches. Time and time again, she has proven her absolute incompetence. And all she has done is played this right-wing populist message that she hopes will get her somewhere. Where does she want to end up? She wants to end up on top. But if she ends up on top, that's where she can start pushing through her a crazy right-wing nonsense stuff. And I will tell you now, Braverman, if she survives the next general election, which is something we have to try and ensure that she does not survive the next general election that she's voted out, because if she does survive that tidal wave that we hope will happen, she could end up being leader of the next Conservative Party. Now, will they get in on that message? I don't know. That's the worrying thing. But the fact is that this absolutely dangerous individual becomes so close, or, or already is close to, like, the third most powerful person in the UK at the moment, being the Home, home Secretary. Yeah, it is kind of worrying. It's kind of bad. And we need to ensure that she never gets any higher than this. Any higher at all. Because what this speech really was, was once again, yet another play for the leadership. And we know that there's rumours, we already know that there's rumours of 40 letters already in with Sir Graham Bradley of the 1922 Commission against Rishi Sunak. Just 15 more. And, well, we could have a leadership contest. Who's the next obvious person going to throw their hat in the ring? Who would gladly, who would gladly throw Rishi Sunak under the bus and take his position? Swella Braverman. And then you could have maybe a year of Braverman before she then has to go to a general election. And who knows what damage she could do in that time. So we have to be careful. We have to make sure that that never happens. Because the damage that someone like Breverman could do 
is monumental. And she's just shown at the UN she's more than willing to do that. And it was also a play, I want to point out as well, for far-right money. Especially the, the gay comments that she made about not accepting gay people because you know, discrimination is, is not enough. That was a play for far-right wing money from America. That's what that those comments were all about. Hey, guys in America, you want to see the UK go more, um, you know, conservative in in the fashion that you want. You know, give me money. That's that's why those comments were made. She's after those conservative Christian uh, dark money uh, funding pots that are out there. That's other the other reason why she was going there. Play for a leadership, a, a cry for funding. So it would not surprise me um, if that is already happening. There's already, shall we say, taps being loosened to flow money uh, towards Suelle Braverman's way or setting up funds or, you know, as we saw with Rishi Sunak, he already had his website and stuff ready to go. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me if Suella Braverman was the same way, just biding her time. Because she sent all the right signals that that's what she's prepared to do. And Rishi Sunak is such a weak prime minister, he daren't get rid of her. So, something we've got to keep an eye on. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, please do remember to click on the like, share and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.